All right, so what I want to do, what we're going to do tonight is we're just going to look at Revelation. We're just going to look at the prologue of Revelation. And um, I also want to give you a tool that I, I would, I know that some people, you, you won't be able to, to study or you're busy, so fair enough. But I, but I do want to start giving some tools that we can use as we, as we read the book of Revelation, as we consider different things. I, I'll share several different resources tonight. And also, I do want to, I want to set the table, I want to set the table tonight for how we will then approach the book of Re Re Revelation, because there's so much debate, there's, there's different interpretations, and if you take the wrong interpretative method, you're going to have a totally different, uh, in a lot of the specifics. Now, I, the big picture, I, for the most part, if, if we're we're, we're, we're taking a traditional high view of scripture, we, we have the same conclusions. So there's the big picture that you have the same conclusions, but when you get into the details, you can go in quite different directions. So I do want to set the table, and, and, and I, want, I, wanted to, I want you to see it in the context. So it's not, it's not something like, okay, there's different interpretations. We're just going to go this route, okay? So I want to give you a, a foundation, a reason for – for why we should read it a certain way. And I, and I want you to see that it's in the context, that it's in the text itself. And so in letting the, the text speak to us, the text is going to tell us the way in which we are to read Revelation. Okay, so the text is going to tell us how we should read the book of Revelation. All right, so let's go ahead and turn your Bibles. If you have your Bibles, I hope that you have your Bibles. Please turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 1. Verses, verses one to four. So I'm literally only looking at four verses. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so we're not, we're, we're taking a small, very small chunk tonight. And, and I hope that you'll be able to, to, to see the big picture here. Okay, so I'll, I'll wait for you to open, open up your Bibles. I also have it on the front of the screen. So if you want, I'll go ahead and read. The word of God says, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who read, reads aloud the words of the prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. <laughs> so, the word of the Lord. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to come back here and we're going to look at each word, each phrase, each sentence. Because there's, there's key ideas that John, the author, is giving to us on how he wants us to read the book of Revelation that he has given to us, okay? So we have to be very careful. We don't come to Revelation with, with preconceived notions. We don't come to Revelation with, with expectations. We're to allow the book to speak to us. What, what do you, let's make some observations or ask some questions. The questions can be what, what words, you know, what a word means. Questions can be what's the relationship between words. Observations can be maybe the definition of a word. It can be a relationship. It can be a significance. Uh, observations can be verbs or action words. They can be actors. They can be objects. They can be some type of you know, a qualification of an action, a description. So let's make some observations here in verse one. What are some things that jump out to you? What are some things that are interesting? Maybe things that are shocking? Pastor Tim? Yeah, go ahead. I guess the first thing that sort of sticks out with me is when it says, the things that must soon take place. That's okay. what hits me. All right. So... You want so what specifically though? So so give me some type of so it jumps out at you and so 
what specifically do you want to highlight? I guess must is, is obviously one of the keywords. Must and soon, I guess. Those are the two key words for me. Okay, now that's really good. So here. And also in verse one, this is a direct revelation from Jesus himself. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so let's, excellent. So, so let's do two things. There is a, let me change this here. This would, this would suggest a time reference then. Is that what you're saying, Sylvia? There's a time and then there's Correct. also this, this certainty. Yeah. Excellent. All right, great. And then um, Pastor brought up, what was your observation now? In, in verse one, it says it's really a revelation of Jesus Christ. So it's a direct revelation from Jesus himself. Yeah, okay. If I, you know, if I read it correctly. Yeah, so there's one idea that this is uh, from Jesus Christ. But it's, but it's from God, right? God, that God gave him to, to, to speak, right? <laughs> yeah, excellent. So, so hold on. So let's, let's, let's make another. So this is, this is a descriptive word because, right, this is a descriptive word. And this is then connected here, right? So this is a description. And then specifically, you're making the identification that God, God is the actor, and the action is that he gave it to Jesus, right? Correct. And this is going to, this is Jesus. Excellent. Excellent. So these are some good observations. If you have pen and paper, maybe you'd want to include that. We have, we have <laughs> new attendees. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Anything else? Anything else you want to add? Well, um, the other thing is that it is for his servants. It's For us, not just for John, it's a it's plural. No, that's great. That's great. So there's this there is this 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 plural idea. That's a great observation. Uh, uh, who are his servants? So we want to ask the question. Um, we don't know precisely. There is a possibility this could be the church. There's a possibility that this could be leaders in the church. Okay, I, I, I'm going to lean to this, but we can't make it definitive. We just don't know. We have to wait to see how servants will define. So that's a question for us to consider. As you read the book, I would, I would, I would ask the question, okay? So that's a question that we can't at this point answer. Perhaps by the end of the lesson, we could answer. Perhaps, or at least have a tentative answer. But just looking at this first statement, we don't know. So that's a great question. Ati Joy for us to consider. A great observation and a great uh, thing to consider. It also, uh, it also tells us the purpose of the revelation. Okay, what's the purpose? It's, uh, it's here in verse one. Go ahead. What must soon to take place? Okay, great. So, so just to be very specific, excellent job, Queer uh, Ronnie. So there is a purpose here from here to here. God gave him to show to his servants the things. So the object of showing, this is an object thing. And, and then the connection is what Ronnie's making here. The things that must soon take place. So there is this idea of, of a future component here. Let me write this down. There is a future component. Yeah, it sounds like God, the Father, sounds like it's, he's giving some revelation to Jesus, who is, and Jesus is passing it to an angel. 
And then the angel's giving it to John. And then who's give, John giving it to? <laughs> service. I guess he has service. Excellent. Great. No, this is good. This is good. Um, and we notice here there's, there, is a, there is an angel. There's the present of an angel, right? Um, so let's, let's just highlight, let's highlight that for right now, and then maybe we'll come back to it. So that, that's an excellent observation. It gives, it, it gives the reason why it was given to John? <coughs> because, he bore, because he bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's why John received it. Okay, so yeah, so let's, so let's hold off on verse two. You're, you're getting Okay, sorry. Through. No, but it's good, it's good. No, that's, that's good, Silvio. It's good that you're yeah. thinking, man. We're, we're, we're getting so much. So just, just in verse one, there's a lot of red bait there. Yeah. There's a lot of information for us to consider. There is, there is something else big that no one's really talked about yet. Um, let's, let's finish down here. So I guess I have really highlighted. So let's look right now at, um, he may, what are some significances? So Paulo mentioned, uh, mentioned to us that the agent is an angel. So this is an agent here. And it's going to the servant, John. What's the action? It's making it known to, to, to John. Good. And who is the he? <laughs> It may be, I think it's Jesus Christ, right? So it could be Jesus. It could oh, be God, God through Jesus. The angel? <laughs> well, it could oh. be the angel because the angel's the, the, the agent. The angel's the agent. I, I, gotcha. I would suspect that the he is, the original source is in God, is in God himself. And so the he would also, when you're dealing with, so this is a, a gr grammatical point. The he always ba goes back to the nearest antecedent. So the he would go back to here, which is God. But it, when there's, when there's a, a pronoun, noun, antecedent. But it's inconsequential because Jesus is the means. Jesus is also the means. Okay, so it, he's in between there. So there is, I'm still, I, so I'm looking here. There's, I'm seeing three words that I, I have, I'm yet to, to see. You've highlighted some of the things. What's the big concept that we, I guess it's staring us in the face, like that causes us to ask a question. What is this word revelation? <laughs> How would you, if someone said revelation of Jesus Christ, how would you define the word revelation? Anyone? Okay, so well, I the word. So, well, so reveal is to, to provide information on something that is not previously known. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's not previously known, but looking at the root, we're getting somewhere. I heard someone say it. There is this reveal idea, okay? There is this re reveal idea contained in the word revelation, okay? Um, you have it also, so it appears, it appears here. If, if you're looking at this idea of reveal, so if we're looking at the idea of reveal, we also have it here to show. Does everyone see that? And then we also have it here made known. <laughs> so, so, um, well, so Bethany brought up sending. You can speak up. Be strong. <laughs> but so the sending is the means by which it's being made known. So, so there is that connection. <laughs> so, so the revelation is not just really a, a, a message, something to be known, but it's something to see because it's show. 
Yes. Okay. So exactly. So what we so looking at these three things, what we can what we can further identify here is this idea of um, uh, like a vision or or um, being made known. Okay. So if if this is the case, the revelation is from Jesus because he's going to give it. He's going to give it. Um, but there is at least people debate. People debate this. Okay, it's debated. Some people just say one. Some people say other. I think it's both. And there's a few really good commentaries that agree. It's not only from Jesus, but it's about Jesus. It's 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 visions. It's this seeing. It's seeing who Jesus is. If we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. Is everyone tracking with me there? Yeah. So, so this is the big takeaway here. Revelation is fundamentally about the revealing of Jesus Christ. We're going to get, what is this revelation? The the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revealing of Jesus Christ. And, but but in, in talking about the word revelation, it's the Greek word apocalypse. We hear you know, apocalypse. That's where we get apocalypse, right? So it's not just it's it's it, it is a specific uh, genre or mode. There is a specific genre or mode. And that mode is vision okay is everyone tracking with me there everyone with me there so no go ahead go ahead what does that what do you mean by genre mode or vision i mean what i i don't understand what do you mean is that the how it is delivered yeah, so it's it's the mode by which the message is delivered. So so oftentimes God can just speak, you know, out of thin air. Um, there are different ways that God will speak. Maybe He can speak through His Holy Spirit through the heart, right? Um, um, but there's also this this uh, God speaks through visions. Okay, and so this word here is part of a group of words that describes. Uh, uh, vision or visionary from God. So in Abraham, God spoke to him in visions. The prophets, God spoke oftentimes through visions. Okay, so the word, if we could research the word apocalypsis or its cognates in Greek and Hebrew, almost always it's going to be in this vision, in this vision. Okay, um, we're going to come back to this to further confirm it. But the visions are almost always in prophetic context or prophecy. So we haven't gotten yet, but perhaps Revelation 1, 1 to 4 is going to have, is going to highlight, is it prophecy or is it something else? So let's, so let's at least we can say we have this key word of Revelation, which seems to suggest a prophetic context. We have, we have, um, this showing, we have this making known. We also have this angel. <laughs> so when angels come with a vision, <laughs> perhaps it's pro it's prophetic, and perhaps it's it's really this visionary mode. Okay. Um, so I I, I want to build a case for 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 a conclusion that we're going to make as we read the the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay. So any other comments or questions, or we can move on. I, I think we can move on to verse. Number two, <laughs> so much information. Um, a lot of things, just to kind of take a step back, because maybe someone will say, you know, Tim, this is so much information. Like, I just don't, I think you're reading too much into it. Part of the problem is that this is a foreign context to us because our culture, our contemporary context, we don't really, we don't have this type of literary genre. We don't have this type of, we're in a, we're in a modern 21st century context. But in the first century, all of these key words, it would just be like, oh, it would be similar today if, if, if you received a newspaper 
and there were certain, and then you look at the different titles, you know, you, you look at news, you look at editorials, you look at comics. There's just all these different contexts that just appear. We just accept uh, without explanation because it's our culture. Well, in the same way, these key words are just immediately identifying to the reader the genre, what's going to happen. We, it's a foreign world to us, and so we have to take the time to really highlight what each word signifies because it's not familiar to us, okay? So that's why, that's why you know, someone reading in the first century just be like, oh, servants, revelation, Jesus, soon take place. Oh, I know what's going on here. And for us, it's like, what? <laughs> so that's kind of why we're just taking our time, and that's why when we read Revelation, we need to take our time and sit back and, and, and really take each, each point carefully. Okay, let's go on to verse number two. Verse number two. All right. Again, what are some things that jump out at you? What are some words that signify, that signify um, some, uh, so maybe these, these big images or ideas? that maybe at first you wouldn't think about, but as we think, we're like, oh man, that is a big idea. What are some words, and, and highlight some words that, that, that come out to you? Actions, objects, subjects, questions, and also um, consider in Tim, first, go ahead. Tim, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, it just uh, occurred to me, can we go back um, to, to, to verse one? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so that line where, where it says, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. Yeah. Why was the word things used instead of events or happenings or things or, or, or why is it called things? Which is like, to me, it connotes an object. Yeah, so let me go to a process in time, which would be an event. Yeah, so... Um, one second here. I don't want to make a mistake. I, I'm just, I have an answer in my mind, but I want to, I can, I have my, uh, my, so I can double check myself. I can double check in real time. So hang on one second. So, uh, to my, to my, to my thinking, things is like an object. Yeah. So, so, so this is, maybe this is forever. This, maybe this is for, uh, this is a, it's not a weakness in, or a deficiency in what God's sharing to us. It's just maybe a deficiency in translation. So I'm looking here, the, the, the apocalypse of, G, of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants, his servants. Uh, so literally all it is, is just what, which is plural. So literally what must happen soon. <laughs> Literally, that's it. So, so the, the things, the literal translation of things could also be a plural that. So that's, that's why we're, we're trying to quantify this Greek pronoun of just what or that in plural form. That's all. It's literally one, it's one Greek letter, okay? And so, and so the best approximate is the things. So this would be broader than... It's a great question, Raul. This is more than just a thing or even things. It's, if, if, if I was translated, perhaps I would use what. But, and I would have an asterisk at the bottom of the page. I would say uh, events. Uh, I would include things. Yeah, it's a, it's a very broad term, right? Yes. It's an incredibly broad term. It can do with persons, events, yep. things. It's just incredible. It's basically awesome. everything that's going to happen. Yes, excellent. Yes, no, and I like Luigi's. Yeah, so so it could be everything. That will happen. Excellent. And so, Tim. Yeah, go ahead. The, in the Holman translation, it just said uh, to show his lips what must quickly take place. Yes. This is the word things. Yes, yes, what? So, yeah, that's, that's 
if I was translating, that's what I would use. I would use what, and then I'd have an asterisk identifying it's a plural. It's a plural in the original language if I was translating. But the, the things isn't a bad translation, it, it, provided we understand, we understand the, the Greek. So, Raul, excellent observation and question, phenomenal. I, that's really good job, I, that's excellent. Okay, so let's, let's go back now to verse number two. Verse number two. So what do you notice? What's, what's, what's a duplicated concept? There's one word here that's a duplicate. It's actually the same concept. It's a different word. Can anyone pick up on that? There is oh. the, uh, the angel is a, is a witness of the word of God and then and also to that testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, so that's one. That's oh, hold on. Is, is the who referring to the angel or is it John? Yeah, so, uh, so, <laughs> so actually the who, the who would be, hold on, let me just double check here again. I think it's John because the, to his servant John, right? No, it's, it's going back to John. It's going back to John. John yeah. So, so, uh, so, and, and we know it can't be God because God is contained. God is contained here, and we know it can't be Jesus because it's Jesus is here. God is here. So the who cannot be John bore God. witness to Jesus. Huh? John bore witness to Jesus. Yes. And so, yeah. No, you're right. It ha this has to be John. This has to be John here. Um, so, but there's two, there's two things, there's two objects. Number one, the word of God. Number two, the testimony. Now, there is debate, and I'm going to leave this open-ended, because in the Greek, this word can also be translated even. And, and, and I think as we read the story, if we're always asking this question of what is the relationship between these two, I think what we're going to see as we read the book is that the and is really the word of God is the testimony of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think we're going to do that. And, and we shouldn't say, well, why would that be the case? Because we know that Jesus is... the living word. But at this point, at this point, we're going to leave it as two. At this point, we're going to leave it as two. And this is debated. So some people will always say that, no, there's a difference between the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. These are two different things. Fair enough. And, 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 and perhaps you don't come away with that conclusion. It's debated. So I just want to just whet your appetite to that. That's something we want to consider. The, the other thing I want us to see here is there is, so that's one, that's one parallel idea that, Pastor Noel highlighted, which I really like, uh, word of God and testimony of Jesus. It's a very close relationship. There's another, there's two words. They're two different words, but they're describing one larger context. What are the two words that are slightly different, but signifying actually one context or setting? What are those two words? Look closely. Isn't witness and testimony the same? Yes, Ati Joy gets the gold star. You get the gold star. To bear witness, the witness gives the testimony, <laughs> right? <laughs> what is that? So Ati Joy, you're on, you're on, you're on, you're batting right now. What is this broader context? What is this, what is this setting here then? A witness bearing witness. What is the broader picture? What when does this happen? In what context does this happen? In the courthouse. Yes. The same thing, courthouse. <laughs> it's a courtroom. It's a judicial, it's a judicial setting. And I actually we're going to see this in a conclusion later that this is the primary setting of the book of Revelation. 
is in someone's courtroom <laughs> on a and, uh, scale. <laughs> and it makes John a credible witness because it says everything that he saw. <laughs> so look at this. He was. Yes. So number one, number one, it makes it's it's dealing with what he saw. So he, so he's a, a testimony. And there's one other. Looking back here, what I've highlighted, what he saw. What is the connection with what he saw with the with chapter one? I mean, with verse one. What he saw. What have we been talking about that there was questions about Kamina earlier? The revelation. Yes. So this is really why we're highlighting this idea of vision. He's seeing a vision. So when God's speaking, it's not just God speaking in thin air and he's listening. He's seeing. He's seeing. So this is why revelation must be seen as visionary. It's visionary. And that's the word revelation. That's this, that's this visionary uh, context. Okay. So we're, we're going to come back to that again. So we'll come back to the conclusions um, uh, later. So at this point, we're just highlighting it. Okay, great. Let's move on now to verse number, verse number three. Verse number three here. So we're almost done. Uh, yeah, we're getting close to being done. What is, <laughs> what is going on here? What is amazing? So we talked about, uh, let's just continue this theme. So we talked about vision. We talked about, uh, seeing, made known. What word here further picks up this visionary visions re revealing? Prophecy. Yeah, prophecy. The words of this prophecy. So as you do your reading, as you do your reading, you're going to see one author describes the book of Revelation as it's a, uh, um, well, so, so in the ancient Near East, sorry, in, not, I should say ancient Near East, in Palestine, in, in a first century context, the specific genres that were credible is you, you actually have this, number one, there's an apocalyptic genre, apocalyptic genre, there's prophetic genre, And actually, in your reading, what, several authors will say that the book of Revelation is a, uh, uh, they include this component of letter, because it's written, a letter written to the seven churches, plus this, plus this. So they call it, they call it an apocalyptic prophetic letter. I disagree with that. I disagree with that interpretation. The question we must ask is, what does John want us to understand this? Does he want us to understand fundamentally as, as apocalyptic genre? Does he want us to primarily understand it as a, as a letter? No. He wants us to understand it. How does John define the book? He defines it as a prophecy, the words of this prophecy. Throughout the book of Revelation, we're going to see listening to the words of the prophecy, keeping the words of the prophecy. Okay, so John wants us to see, he wants us to, he wants his visions to be identified as prophetic. Not, ap not apocalyptic genre, not epistolary, although he, it's written there is epistolary genre included in his letter. He, he is wanting us to identify his visions, the vision that he received of Jesus Christ as prophetic. Okay, that's very important, all right? So I'm trying to understand the terms that you're using, yeah. him. Yeah. So are you saying that um, by it, the it but it being prophetic it is more of telling what's going to happen in the future in instead of 
uh, apocalyptic, meaning what's the end. It's not the end. It's more just the future. Okay. So, yeah. So let me define some notes. Great. Question. I'm let trying. Me, yeah. Let, let, let me, let me define. So apocalyptic, maybe I should post some examples. So you can read the difference between apocalyptic genre, prophetic genre, because apocalyptic is, 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 can even be in the present, but it's just, it's an actual genre in a lot of extra biblical texts. So you have, you have apocalypse of, of Jude, you have apocalypse, you have, you have these different apocalypse. And so there is this apocalyptic genre. Genre refers to the structure and content of how a book is written. So genres in today's, we have, we have historical biographical, we have, uh, we have poetry, we have fiction, we have news, we have um, sci-fi. So we have a lot of different genres. There's in the in the first century and 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 around the first century, pre-first century, post-first century. So centuries before, centuries after, you actually have apocalyptic, you have prophetic, specific genres. Okay, and so people, you and the reason why I'm bringing, I wouldn't normally bring these up. I'm bringing this up because if you're doing your own reading outside of this small group, you're going to see apocalyptic. You're going to see people saying, "Well, it's primary apocalyptic." You're going to see these discussions so that's why i'm bringing it up if if you were doing your own reading outside i would not really talk about this because the, the book study our book study itself is clearly identifying its prophetic so what i want us to see here so joy to be quite clear i want us to see that we should read this like the book of isaiah he wants us to read it like the book of isaiah or jeremiah and so and so we're going to define what you talked about, about I'm going to have a definition for prophecy in, in just a short bit of time. Okay. So I'm going to clearly define it for us. But what I'm trying to get at is that John wants his, his, the letter that he's written to the churches. We're going to see that in a minute. He wants the, the readers to identify his book, not as a letter like Paul, not as a gospel, but as a prophecy like those of Jeremiah, those of Isaiah, those of Ezekiel. Okay? So um, that, is, that is very important for us. And, and, and my assignment for us is to read some of those letters to get a sense of how we should be reading, uh, reading the Revelation. Okay? Is that helpful, Joy? Do you still have a question? Yeah, that helps. Um, especially when you mentioned about, about the prophecy like Isaiah mm -hmm. and Jeremiah. I mean, they prophesied about Jesus, right? Yes. The <laughs> Jesus coming. Now, this is beyond that now. Yeah, yes, exactly. So, no, excellent. Yeah, so, yeah, good. I think the reason why people are are tending to to read the book of revelation as apocalyptic because of what is written there and then there's like wars and and yeah there's a lot of things it's like the destruction of the world and yeah. people are excited about that and a lot i know a lot of pastors oh is it the end of the world is that they, they they highlight the the destruction or the, the apocalypse rather than what what is really what the letter is really saying about jesus christ or something like that yeah. No, excellent. And here's the thing. I'm not, I'm not, okay, so let me be clear. I'm not saying that there is an apocalyptic genre contained in, like, because there's vision. So there is overlap between apocalyptic and pro prophecy, okay? I'm not, but what I'm saying is fundamentally how we approach it, number one. And then number two, uh, number two is that we should be identifying it more closely with those other prophetic books, which also have visions. Ezekiel is full of visions, so, so there is, there is overlap in, in looking at, if you have, let's just say here, let's just to help define it. Let's say you have a pot, this is apocalyptic genre here. Okay. And then we have prophetic genre in looking at the content. So right now we're looking at content. There is overlap between the two. There, there is, there is apocalyptic visions in pro pro prophetic because apocalyptic as the technical genre that came in in, in, in time and space in history 
it was drawing from prophetic books as a pattern to follow. Okay. Now the reason why the reason why you're going to see references to even Revelation is a foundation for many apocalyptic books that or or, or a reference point for many apo Christian apocalyptic books post first century. Okay, so that's why there's overlap. The reason why we need to be aware of these things is because people, especially liberals and people discrediting the word of God, they're going to to read, oh, they didn't really know what they're talking about. They're they're going to read Revelation primarily as apocalyptic, and then they're going to equate apocalyptic to the other false ap apocalypses out there. As they see, it's just another one of these uh, fancy, you know, pie in the sky, whatever. It's not real, okay? So it's not to say that we don't see the end of the world in Revelation, okay? But it's not, um, yeah. So I, I just want to make that. I just want to make that that caveat with what Pastor's saying. Um, yeah. It's a little tricky. I, 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 this is why it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not like, I mean, it is clear. I hope that we're seeing that it's clear, but it's, it's a tricky business. It's a tricky business. And if you assume the wrong approach in your interpretation, everything's going to be thrown off. Um, let, let's look here. What, let's look here. What's the big idea in, 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 uh, Verse three. What is the big idea? Give me, give me the big idea or the big, the big key words that you see or the big word, the big concept, the big action word. What do you see? Blessed. Bethany said Blessed. it. Yeah. Go ahead. Blessed. It's mentioned twice. So this idea of blessed. So what we want to identify here is this is a beatitude. Where are the uh, where are two other locations in Scripture of famous beatitudes? Give me two other locations for famous beatitudes. Matthew. Yes, we have Matthew chapter what? Five. Five. And then where is the other famous? It's so famous beatitude in the Old Testament. There's many in the Old Testament. What's the big, really big one? Oh, Psalm. Uh, Psalm. Is it one? Yeah, Psalm, uh, Psalm one, right? Psalm 1 is another big blessed. Blessed is the one who does not walk, does not stand, does not sit. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates day and night. He can't be like a tree, right? So there's, this, there's a lot of beatitudes in Scripture, okay? Uh, no one really reads this beatitude. <laughs> this beatitude is so important. <sighs> Look at this. Look at this. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. So are we so say from now on, when I read the book of Revelation, I will read it really, really loud. Yes, we should we're read it all loud. We're all blessed tonight because we're reading. Yes. But hold on, hold on. Yes and no, yes and no. So number one, number one. <laughs> oh, there's so a I think, uh, hey, Tim. Yeah. So I guess this letter is supposed to be read aloud in public. Yes. And no one reads it. No one reads it. But we aren't supposed to just read it. We have to keep what's written. But look here. So it's not just reading. You can read it and not receive the blessing. Okay? Uh, why? Because there You have to hear it too. So this is Beatitude number one. Oh, yeah. There's three parts. Number two. Blessed is the one who reads aloud, and blessed are those who hear. And... So this is, it's, it's, this is a, a three-part blessing. You only get the blessing of all three. <laughs> Keep it written. And look at this. Are those who keep. Wow. Keep. So read here and keep. This is obey, literally obey. So... Read, hear, and keep. <laughs> Read the word of the prophecy. Hear it and obey it. <laughs> and what is the reason? What is the reason why 
So when people say revelation is too confusing, I'm not going to waste my time. No, <laughs> you can't afford to not read it. <laughs> <laughs> and here's something else to think about fundamentally fundamentally it's not about it's not about oh this the future doesn't apply to us just read it for assurance or just read it for something else fundamentally it's to be it's to be read it's to be heard and it's to be obeyed. It's to be obeyed. And so there is a traditional interpretation in, we're not gonna, we're not gonna mince words. Revelation versus chapter one to three, oh, it's about the church. Okay, and then four to 19 or four to 20, we're not gonna be here. So we just kind of like, we don't have to worry about it. We're not gonna be here, we're not to worry about it. But is it really, is, is, is this blessing really just, okay, just keep Revelation one to three, Ignore, ignore four to, to 19, we're not going to be here. And then 21 and 22, all right, let's, let's listen to that. No, I, I, think, I think that reading it like that is a very bad interpretation. And we have the clue here that all of this applies to all of us. The so Revelation 4 to 19 is to be read by us, it's to be heard by us, it's to be obeyed by us. So I'm going to make a strong case. If it's to be obeyed by us, I think we're going to be here in some sense, okay? That, that's not to say, you know, I don't think people should get scared. Should, should get scared. I, I hope that you should. I, I hope that you're not afraid. But I, I do think it's, it's, it's a bad interpretation to assume a, 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 a eschatological time framework and say, okay, we're not going to be there, so we don't have to worry about it. When here, the fundamental blessing at the beginning of the book is to hear, to, 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 to read, to hear, and to obey. That's like, that's like going to Matthew, and then the end of Matthew is the Great Commission. And it's like, okay, we don't really have to worry, you know, whatever. Like, this is so foundational. This is so foundational. And if you don't hear anything else tonight, hear that however else you read Revelation, you need to be looking, you need to be reading, you need to be listening for the commands. There's going to be a lot of commands. And, but they're not gonna be, they're not gonna be terrible. You're gonna look at the commands like, oh wow, that's, that's, what we're, that's what we've already been doing or that's what we're already called to do. So I, I do wanna say that a lot of the obedience is not, it's not gonna be different than the rest of the scripture. It's gonna be the same. Um, we looked in the book of Hebrews, right? There was a lot of actually, we, we came to realize that it's primarily about faith and belief, right? I, I'm going to tell you right now, you'd be surprised. It's going to be quite, you're going to be like, wow, it's the same. So I, I just really want to stress here, though, that, you know, people always want the blessing. We, we pray a blessing upon our cars. We pray a blessing upon our house. We pray a blessing upon our children. We want the blessing. So what I want to tell everyone here tonight if you want the blessing of revelation, <laughs> let's be reading it, let's be listening it, let's be obeying it. The, the last thing I want to say, we're almost done, time is running out, time is fleeting. The last thing I want to say as we end here is that the audience is addressed. The primary audience of this book is really confirmed. Um, uh, it's, it's written to, it's written to, uh, seven churches that are in Asia. Seven is the number of completion. Okay. And so if seven is the number of completion, this is going to signify, now maybe right now you don't agree with me, but this is going to, it's written to the specific seven churches. There are seven literal churches. So these are literal, these are literal churches. We're going to see that, but it's also the fact that seven is chosen that this is going to also be the whole church. The whole church needs to be listening to this message. So what I want us to highlight here is that the only condition, there, 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 there is the audience, 
Revelation is written to anyone who would read, hear, and obey, is what I'm trying to get at. It's not, so it's not focused primarily on ethnic Israel, although eth ethnic Israel may be included, okay? Um, it's not written to a specific type of people except anyone. It's written to anyone who would read, hear, and obey, and it's primarily written to the church, okay? So the way by which you're going to obey the prophecy is all roads go through the church. <laughs> Let's go through the church because the church is the body of Christ. It's it's the people of the Messiah, literally, my church, people of the Messiah. But in verse one, it says the servants, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> No. Ah, yes. nice. And that's why we waited. That's why we waited. Ah. So I'm going to I'm going to assert that the servants, you know, people say that the servants is just really the focus on the on the prophets, a special class. But but I'm gonna my interpretation is that the servants are <laughs> the church. <laughs> you know, again, it could it is debated, but I think we're gonna see as we continue to if you I'm gonna I'm going to save this video. I'm going to have it edited and put it up on, on YouTube so that as we read through the, we have, a, we have a, a guide. So as we read through the book of Revelation, we are going to continue to come back to these observations, to these questions, to these answers, and we're going to get at it. This is reading in context, okay? Um, uh, people, you're not going to see just the amazing significances at the end of the book unless you you just continually highlight and watch the story unfold, okay? All right, uh, these are the, this, we've done the groundwork, and so now what I want to do now is I just have a highlight of some, I will, I will post this as a PDF later today, um, provided I don't have a problem here. Provided I don't have a problem. I'm gonna post this, these are some things to consider as we read the book of Revelation. And uh, um, I just want you to consider these, and I'm going to zoom it in right here. Are you going to send this out so that we can print it? Yes, I will, I will send it as a nice PDF. I'm going to spruce it up a little bit, put a little bit of color so it's beautiful. And uh, <laughs> so yeah. you don't have to. Are you uh, going to send us that, that the scribbly uh, that study you, you made? <laughs> I will also screenshot my scribbly and I will, I will, I will send it out as well. I'll post on the group. Okay. Okay. Just some things. That's good. I'm going to read through this to consider number one, number one. And actually, I don't know where you stand with what's going on in the U S we are in the church. So we're not going to talk about that, but, but this should give, this should give, this study should give you confidence in whatever happens. Whether, whatever happens, this should give confidence. And I, and I hope that revelation will be a blessing to you and an encouragement, whatever happens. Number one, the book of Revelation is primarily about the revealing of Jesus Christ. Always be asking that question. How does these visions relate to revealing Christ to us? fundamental. It's not about end times. It's not about Russia. It's not about China. It's not about, you know, ethnic Israel, although they could, you know, whatever we could be. <laughs> um, but it's fundamentally about the revealing of Jesus Christ. If, if we don't come away from this study focused upon the person and work of Jesus Christ, we are not obeying the words of the prophets. Number one. Number two. What is the revealing? So I'm going to give the big picture revealing. Maybe we'll add to this. This is a tentative. I, you know, um, I, I, always, I always allow for uh, revision, but tentatively what I want to say to us is the revealing, that, that revealing is the resurrected, exalted, glorified Christ who will bring into reality the word of God, specifically the conquering of his enemies, the judgment of the world, the resurrection of his saints, the establishment of his kingdom, and life 
in the presence of God forevermore. Uh, let's just add one here. Rewarding of his saints. Rewarding of his saints. I'll reword that. It should be judgment of the world, rewarding of the saints, the resurrection of the saints, uh, the establishment of his eternal kingdom and life <laughs> in the presence of God forevermore. Th this is this is the revealing of, of, of Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, number three. The book is a book of visions, and thus, in order for it to be read literally, it must be interpreted figuratively. <laughs> so if we're going to read it literally, it must be read figuratively. <laughs> so this is why people say, oh, you're not reading it literally. It's like, no, you're reading, reading a genre literally. You have to follow the genre, OK? So reading, reading. The book of the visions, literally, we must read it figuratively, okay? Our interpretative method, we'll discuss this more, but it's an idealist, futurist approach. And maybe I'll add a definition when I send this out later tonight. That is to say that it, it's describing um, how God operates in, on the cosmic level. Um, so it's, it's dealing with us. And there is also a future component because it does describe literal events. Okay, so, so it's not to say, oh, this is just God, God, how, this is how God deals. We don't know what happened, right? No, so it's dealing with events. So Revelation applies to our events today, our life today. That's, how, that's why and how we can obey it. If it doesn't apply to us today, we can't obey it, okay? And it's more than simply assurance of the future, all right? And you're going to see you're going to see it. You're going to see it, uh, that, that we can obey it today. All right? So it's, it's, it's dealing with how God, go ahead. You can, you can add it, uh, the, the sense of urgency of it, um, happening soon. Yes, exactly. And so that's part of why we're doing what we're doing here. So, so um, that's why I included 1C and 3C. There's that sense of urgency, and that's why it, it's a if it, there wasn't a sense of urgency, the church would not, it would not apply to the church. And so excellent observation, Quirrell, excellent. Good. That's a really good observation. Uh, number, number five, prophecy is, so this is concerning Joy's question. Prophecy is the proclamation of the word of God. So fundamentally, prophecy is the proclamation of the word of God, especially concerning the future but it's not just any future. It's not just the lottery. It's not, it's not dealing with that. It's concerning judgment and salvation. The prophets always declared the word of God, and it always concerned judgment and salvation. So it's very specific. And if we are to be saved, it applies to us. It applies to us. Next. Uh, the setting of the book is primarily a courtroom setting. It is God's eternal universal courtroom. So as we read the book of Revelation, look for different metaphors, look for different courtroom images. They're, they're going to be all over the book because the, the broader context is this massive courtroom setting in which the judge is declaring the verdict. And then his, the verdict is going to be implemented. The verdict will be declared, the verdict will be implemented, and the punishment and reward will be meted out. Okay? Next, the book of Revelation is written to the church, the body of Christ. It is not primarily uh, for nor addressed to the nation of Israel or ethnic Israel, although they are included by faith, <laughs> by faith, in salvation or in judgment. And so there's some passages of scripture there. You can look them up in your own time. Lastly, lastly, the prophecy is for anyone, anyone, Filipinos, Chinese, Vietnamese, Cambodians, Americans, Brazilians, Portuguese, uh, Russians, French, <laughs> Germans, England, South Africans, uh, Nigerians, it is for anyone who would read, 
hear and obey. Thus it is addressed for all people. Okay, so I really want to highlight this is how we set the table. So now that the table is set, I hope you will read, you will read the, 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 uh, the book of Revelation. I, I'm out of time, so what I'll do is maybe I'll post some resources. I'll post some resources uh, on the, the group page, or next week I can also sh share them as well. Um, but, but that's all I have. That, that, that's all I have. I'll, I turn it, I, I yield the floor back to, <laughs> to, to Pastor Noel.